and I hope that you're all having fun. There's been a lot of effort gone in by the church members and the teachers to try to make things that's pleasing for you. And what about that breakfast tonight? Sawmill gravy. <laughs> Thank you. They worked very hard for that, and we hope you've been having a good time. But that's not our only motive for having you here. We're wanting to share with each and every one of you the precious truth of God's Word. I uh, want, want to share just a little bit with you tonight. Uh, I love it that the Bible is simple enough to speak to us. Did you know that God could have spoke to us on a level that none of us would ever have understood? A man by the name of Charles Hagging Spurgeon in Great Britain back in the 1800s said if within the Bible that there are places shallow enough for a child to wade, there are also places deep enough for whales to swim. I want to share with you just a little thought right here. The Bible says that he came unto his own and his own received him not, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what I want you to listen to. If you've been thinking about your eternal destiny, if you've been thinking about life and death, what your position is going to be in making that decision forever, then you listen to this right here. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them which believe on his name. When you're ready to receive the Savior, he's ready to receive you. And anyone that's here that's not been saved, when you realize that you're a sinner and you're willing to call upon his name and ask him to be your sin bearer, your substitute, and your Savior, he will do that. If you need help with that, you get in touch with one of us. God bless you. We're so pleased to have you. Children, the parents, we're pleased to have every one of you. And what a privilege it is. What a good time we've been having. And what about this really comfortable weather God's given us? But there, come on, brother. What are you all saying? we got a cool pastor. Uh, by show of hands, what do you say? Yes. <laughs> Hey, I think we just put the pressure on him. He's going to have to wear that hat. <laughs> so, I just want to get the reputation out there. Uh, on the uh, screen here, the verse tonight is Matthew 7, 24. Let's read it aloud. Therefore, whoever hears... Let's start again. Go with me. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of my mind and does leave me, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Let's try that one more time. Matthew 7, 24. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them and will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock. Tonight's theme tonight is bedrock base. And what I want to share with you is this, is that the Bible Jim here shares is that therefore whoever hears these sayings of mine does them, and I will liken him to the wise man who built this house upon a rock. And what we're talking about there is when I was seven years old, our pastor talked about Jesus Christ. When I was seven years old, just before I turned seven, that was the time that I made the Lord Jesus Christ my foundation, my rock. And I am so thankful that God did that. And God changed my life forever. And I want to challenge each one of you all that if you've not been born again, and you've not made Jesus Christ your bedrock, your rock, your firm foundation that can carry you through the winds and the trials and the tribulations of this earth, I beg of you to seek Christ with everything that you have as well. Cardboard up here, though. I said, Be quiet. So, how's the towers coming? Sorry. 
Well, if Alex here would stop bumping the table, maybe we could get higher than one story. I didn't mean to. Can you help us? Sure. Try it again. Let's see if I can see what the problem is. Boy, does this bring back memories. I can remember in the wintertime when it was too cold for me and Uncle David to get out. We love building towers. Really? They had index cards back then? Of course they had index cards back then. How old do you think I am anyway? <laughs> Don't you answer that. It's no use. I can't do it. You know what your problem is, don't you? Your foundation is weak. Huh? Watch. Now, put one over the top and start building now. I didn't think about folding this. I know it's unconventional. But the key to a sturdy tower is a strong foundation. See? You can even bump the table and it won't fall now. That really does make a difference, doesn't it? It sure does. And you know what? Strong foundation is important to people too. Is that why Alex has such a feet? <laughs> so he won't fall over? <laughs> ha ha ha. You're so funny. No. With people it's important to have God's word as our foundation. Remember the Bible's account of the wise man who built his house on the rock? Yep. And the foolish man who built his house on the sand? Yep. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what this story's talking about. When the storm came, the foolish man's house came crashing down. Why? Because his foundation was weak. Exactly. Then why did the wise man's house stay standing? Because his foundation was strong. Right again. In the same way, if we build our lives on God's word, we'll have a strong foundation and be able to make it through when bad things happen. So how do we build our lives on God's Word? Great question. Let's see what the Bible says. In, John, in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24 it says, therefore, therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. So there you go. According to Jesus, we need to read and study his Word. You need to read the Bible, and I mean read it. And then you need to do what it says. Ask God the Holy Spirit and, and help you obey. That's how we build our life on God's Word. Well, then that's what I'm going to do. Me too. Okay. Y'all work on the towers. I'm going to go back outside and get her supper. I ain't eating that. <laughs> Me neither. Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we approach your throne of grace, Father, we thank you for this occasion. This is another opportunity, Lord, to address this crowd of children, Father, mothers and dads. Father, we just ask for your leadership and your guidance. Father, we promise to sow the seed and water it with prayer, Father, but we know the rest of the work belongs to you. Lord, we just ask for your intervention here to touch some hearts here, Father, to touch some hearts that need to be touched. Lord, we love you. We thank you and we praise you. It's in your precious Son's name we do humbly pray. Amen.